Hi, this pot should give you a clue of what we're gonna cook today. This is called a cataplana. It is a pot they cook with throughout the Algar region of Portugal. It's known for its gorgeous beaches, a gorgeous area. I got a chance to visit there a few years ago after my daughter was studying in Sevilla, Spain. We drove through that whole Algarve area, Faro, Sagres, and made our way up to Lisbon. So just a beautiful area, some of the best beaches of Portugal and great weather and great seafood, as you can imagine. Definitely worthwhile visiting there. The Hata Plana. It's been used for hundreds of years. Clamshell pot. A lot of times you'll see these made out of copper. The copper ones are very expensive, closer to the $300 range. This type of pot is more like $50 to $70. The history behind the Cata Plana, they believe it might have come over from the Moors because it's very similar to the pot they call tagine. It's a covered pot, which is traditionally made of clay. And they use it in the same way that the Portuguese used the Cata Plana, steam, fish, and other meats. Another aspect of the Cataplana's history is they believe fishermen in the Algarve region of southern Portugal took these pots out with them when they went to sea. They would fill up a portion of their catch in the Cataplana, bring it back home, and cook it all in the same vessel. So it's a rich history in southern Portugal. Anything cooked inside the Cataplana is considered a Cataplana, but traditionally it's seafood, clams especially, then a plethora of other seafood. But today we're sticking to the traditional style. After I've told you all about this cataplana, get it if you like, but also this could be made in any cooking vessel with a lid. So any pot you have with a firm lid, that should work just fine. If you get one of these, they also could be used for things like paella or just other stew dishes. You know, it's a little interesting presentation. It's really great if you're making chipino, because then again, you make the chipino in here and then you bring it to the table. And then all the shells, the crab shells, the clam shells all go on this dirty side and everyone picks out of this side. So it could be used in a variety of ways. That's it, so let's get started on this traditional cataplana from Southern Portugal. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is clean my shellfish. Clams especially are known for having a lot of sand on the outside of them. So I like to rinse them, rinse them like three or four times until the water comes out clean. So you want to go through your mussels and clams. If you see any open shells, that means the mussel's dead. When it's dead, it can't hold its shell shut, obviously, and so that's when it opens up. So anytime, sometimes it might be open, but if you press on it, if they're alive, they'll seal shut tightly. So any open, oops, see yeah, how that one just did that. So that's a good mussel. But if, if you find an open mussel and you tap on it, and it is it does not close you want to throw it out because that muscle could impart bad flavors to the dish one of the key things to consider when cooking seafood is that unlike land animals that have a lot of fat and they're warm-blooded so they need that fat to keep them warm fish has very little fat most fish so because of that it could dry out really fast it goes from being moist to dry fairly quickly. So one of the key things with fish always is to not overcook it. And obviously cooking it in a moist environment like steam helps that out. My goal when making a dish such as this is to cook the food in order. The things that are gonna take the longest to start cooking those first and then especially tender things like clams and especially like prawns and scallops are probably the most tender. I won't cook until the very end because I don't want those to turn hard and rubbery or dry. I have my sea bass here. You could use just about any fish that's fresh for you. Now I'll slice this in individual portions. I have our jumbo shrimp. I will season this with salt and pepper. My cooking style, I definitely like to season as I go because I always think, okay, how do I make this part of the dish the best it could be? And I don't want to think about that at the very end when it's a big conglomerate of different ingredients. Each step, I kind of like to think that, you know, how do I make, if I was just cooking these two items, how would I make this taste really good? And definitely that begins with salt and pepper. And usually if you salt it, you know, just 10 minutes ahead of time, it lets the salt penetrate the protein and therefore you get better flavor. My pan is hot. Put in my Portuguese extra virgin olive oil. Probably gonna start off with about a quarter cup. Now I'm gonna add in the garlic. The thought process is the garlic's not only gonna saute in here, but it's also gonna flavor all this delicious oil. Onions, I don't worry about overcooking, so I'll start these right away. 
I have some red bell pepper. Some of the red bell pepper I chopped to put in the dish. And then some of it I cut in rings to use as garnish. So it just kind of looks nice. I'm always in the habit of thinking about what's this food going to look like when it's cooked at the end. Sauteed onions and bell pepper, so I want to season that. Okay, you can see that the onions have been cooking for about 17 minutes now. And again, I already tasted this, but at this point, taste, pull out some onions, taste it. It should taste good. It should have a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. It should have some nice flavor to it. There's a few ways to go about this. You could have no stock at all. You could use uh, like a fish stock from the store. You could use, um, I have clam juice. I always love clam juice instead of fish stock. So I have about four ounces of clam juice. Usually you could find clam juice. If not, you could find a little jar of canned clams and just pour the whole thing in there. It just gives really nice flavor. I have some vino verde. So I'm gonna put in some vino verde in there. I will put in the clam juice. And when the clams open up too, I mean, just sauteed clam. Like if you just sauteed butter, wine, garlic, and clams in here, when those clams open up, I'm telling you, it's heaven. <laughs> just sauteed clams with the butter and the wine, that mixture is incredibly good. Go to Costco, get yourself a big bag of clams. You just dip your bowl of cocoa or your pop six in that bread, you'll be doing all right. So, and one can of diced tomatoes. The cataplana could be made fairly dry or fairly wet, you know, soupy, just depending on what your preference is. I just have some bread ready. You do not want to let this juice go to waste. So now I will put in the clams. Again, these are clean clams. The clams and mussels generally take a few minutes longer than the delicate fish and the shrimp to cook, so that's why I'll start these first. <clears throat> so I close that, I'm gonna let that cook for about five minutes, then I'll add in the rest of my seafood. Okay, the mussels and clams have been cooking for about five minutes. Open that up. It's already smelling. Oh, smelling so good. Okay, so now I'm gonna put in our, this is cilantro, my fresh parsley. And now I have my shrimp and sea bass I'll put in there. It's been seasoned. I'm telling you, this is one of those dishes I'm like Homer Simpson right now. I'm just drooling. Can't wait to dig in. If you're not used to cooking fish, again, a meat thermometer, most fish is done at 140. So if you poke the thermometer in at the thickest part of the fish, at 140, it's done. But like most fish, if it's really fresh, I mean, just like sushi, I'd rather have it medium rare and a little undercooked, probably more like at 135. I think that's where fish is at its best. So put a few bell pepper rings around for garnish. Seal it shut, or if you're using a, a regular pot, you just put the lid on there. One thing I put in there also is some PD PD from my cousin Miguel, he gave it to me for Christmas. So any hot pepper you like, sometimes I'll use the dry PD PD peppers, or you could use like Thai chili peppers, or if you don't have that, Tabasco. Alexa, set a timer for six minutes. Six minutes, starting now. I also have a lot of seafood, especially bakulao. If you're a fan of bakulao, check out my playlist. I think now I have like about seven recipes on bakulao. I have links to the products I use in the description area of YouTube, or you could find it on my webpage, justcookwithmichael.com. I'll put this cataplana pot on there if you are interested in buying one. And I get a little percentage of that that helps me keep the channel going. All right, I had it cooking for about 10 minutes. I checked it at six minutes and looked like it needed a little bit longer. If you want to impress your friends, bring this to the table and open it up right in front of them. Oh! Mmm, smells so good. I have my bowl de caco, the Madeira bread. It's in my playlist if you want to see how to make that. You know, spread on some butter, garlic butter, dip it in the cataplana. You'll be doing all right. Go give the cataplana a try. Go check out the Algarve area of Portugal. You won't regret it. Thanks for joining me. Now go cook for someone you love.